You most likely heard about the concept of 3D printing. It's a new way of manufacturing that recently gained a lot of popularity. Basically, you feed a file into a printer, and with some hidden magic, this file becomes a physical object. What exactly is this file? Well, this file is also known as the STL file. It's in a way a blueprint for our model that we want to print. Now this video will give you insights on the STL file, how to generate your first STL file, as well as loading some pre-generated ones and rendering them in OpenGL. By the way, this video is the part two of my STL viewer in Python. Check out the first video so you know more about this project. All right then, let's go. So, let's start by understanding what an STL file is. STL stands for stereolithography. Some also refer to it as the standard triangle language. And it's a file format commonly used in 3D printing, but also in manufacturing. This file approximates a 3D continuous model into a discrete one with triangles. Now, why do we use triangles? Triangles are the go-to choice for representing 3D surfaces for several reasons. Well, in a way they're simple, unlike most complex shapes. It's actually the shape defined with the least amount of vertices, unlike other shapes. For example, the dodecagon. Now, how do we define a triangle in the context of 3D modeling? A triangle is defined by three vertices that are connected by edges. Each vertex is specified by its coordinate in 3D space, so the X, Y, and Z coordinate. By defining the positions of these vertices and the connection between them, we precisely describe the shape and orientation of our triangle. So when we talk about 3D geometry, we're often talking about collections of these triangles that together form a complex object. So we go from a very basic object, but by combining very basic and simple objects, this results in pretty complex objects, for example the ones you can see here, making it very viable for all sorts of situations. Now that we understand the importance of triangles and how they're defined, we can explore a little further about the STL file. There are mainly two types of STL files, the ASCII and binary type. Now, ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It's a way to represent text on computers. The ASCII STL file uses plain text to describe the 3D object. You can open them with any text editor, for example, Notepad. Now, the file in itself contains two main pieces of information. First, the solid name, and second, the group of triangles that defines our object. Now each triangle is defined with a facet, and each facet being defined with a normal, and a set of three vertices. These are defined with a X, Y, and Z coordinate. Now the advantage of such a ASCII type is that it's actually human readable. You can read the data containing it, but you can also edit the file and then save it to change your 3D model. For example, you can add or remove a triangle if you wish to do so. Okay, now the ASCII out of the way, let's talk about the binary STL. Now as for the binary STL file, as the name suggests, the file contains compact binary data. Since it's the native computer language, this type of file is processed more easily and more efficient than the ASCII type. The only downside to them is that, well, you cannot read it very well and the content is not very visually clear. Well, unless you speak fluently binary for some reason. Now in practice, would you choose a ASCII or a binary type file? Well, if it's a relatively simple model, you can go for a ASCII type. If the model is very dense, then you would rather choose the binary option since it's more efficiently stored in terms of size and then in terms of processing time. For example, in SOLIDWORKS, you can save a part you just made on a STL format, going into the save then save as, choosing the STL format and then options. Here you can find two types, it's either binary or ASCII, 10,000 triangles. You can see that it is approximately, let's say, 500 kilobytes. Now if I choose the ASCII, it's at 2.9 megabytes, which is almost six times as much. If we go full caveman style on the density of our model, 100 63 megabytes. Now if it would be an ASCII, it would just crush it, being almost one gigabyte. 
which saved us five times the size. Now hopefully you get the idea between the difference of the ASCII and binary file. Alright, now we've discussed what an STL file is and the different types of it. Now let's actually hop on Visual Studio Code and try creating our own STL file using Python. Now to actually generate a STL file, you will need two main modules, which are the STL well, module and the NumPy module. You can download them with pip if you don't have them, with pip install numpy stl and pip install numpy. But since I already have them, we're good to go. Now, we import both our modules. So starting with numpy, we don't need everything from the stl module yet. We will just need to import a mesh module from it to generate our stl model. Now the first thing we gotta do is to define the vertices of our 3D tetrahedron. A tetrahedron is a four triangle shaped object. Now we can set aside the figure to directly copy the coordinates O, A, B and C. Now that we define the vertices, we need to define the faces of our triangles. In a way we're trying to link the vertices together to form a triangle, which is a face. For example, OBC, or OAB, or ABC, etc. Now you can see that we define the four faces we have, since our tetrahedron is made of, of four triangles. Next, we need to create an empty mesh, and to do so, we will utilize the mesh class of the mesh module. We will first start by giving it a empty NumPy array having the same shape of our number of faces, so we're having four and then specifying the data type of it as being a mesh type. Then we will add to our mesh object the actual data, and to do so, we are going to iterate over it, replacing the index with the actual point it represents. For example, zero represents O, then one represents A, and so on. Now, what we want to do actually is just replacing the indices of faces with the actual point it represents. So we can do this by using two for loops where we will, in a way, first time iterate through the faces, and then each faces we will iterate a second time three times for each point that is contained in this face, which we will affect to our my mesh vector. That's actually all you need to do to create a 3D model in Python. You can go ahead and print the vectors contained in my mesh. You can see that it represents the tetrahedron we wanted to make. Now to actually save our model as an STL file, we are going to use the .save method, specifying the name of our STL file and the mode, or actually type, of the STL file. To do so, we actually need to import also the mode class, specifying the mode.ascii if we want it to be an ASCII file, or mode.binary if we want it to be a binary file. Now if you go ahead and run our code, we will see that it will generate successfully two STL files, one in ASCII, as you can see, and the other in binary, which we cannot open in VS Code. But using 3D softwares to actually view what we just made, we can see that it's actually a tetrahedron. So in a way, we succeeded at doing that. Now, the other question to ask is, how do we actually load up a STL file? This is what we will see right now. Right, so here I created another file to load up our STL. Once again, we are going to import the mesh module from STL, so from STL import mesh. Now, the first thing we got to do is to specify the path of our STL, our STL model. I've moved the STL files in another folder here, it's called STL files. So let's actually specify and load up this mini car STL. As you can see, it's a binary type file. All right, so let's do that. STL path will be equal to, we specified our STL path. Now to actually load up our STL model, we are going to make a new variable called STL model, which will be equal to mesh dot mesh, and then dot from file. We want to actually load up the STL file in our STL path, like so. And that's basically all you need to do to load up your file. If you want the faces alone of your model, you can create two new variables called 
vectors and normals. Now vectors will be equal to STL model dot vectors for normals is the STL model dot normals. Now if we would print the 10 first vectors and 10 first normals, we will see the following. We run our code and we see that we first display our 10 first faces or triangles. Each triangle has three vertices and each vertice has I mean, each vertex has a x, y, and z coordinate. Same goes for the normals. The 10 triangles have 10 normals, each defined with an x, y, and z coordinate. Now, remember our file here is an ASCII binary. Let's say we want to save it as an ASCII STL. It's the same as we just saw, so we'll do an STL model dot save. Now we gotta specify where we want to save our file. So let's say we want to save in the same location, changing the name to minicar, ASCII, like this, specifying the mode to mode.ASCII, and of course importing the, the mode class. Now if we run our code once again, we will see that it might take a little bit of time. You will see that we will generate an minicar ASCII file, like so. So there you have it. This is how you actually load up a STL file. It's very easy. You can see you can do it in less than 10 lines of code. Now the next question is how do we actually render an STL file in our OpenGL scene? That's actually also very easy since we basically saw the principle in last video. Let's actually do it right now. Now here you can see that I created a new third Python file called render STL. We are going to copy the exact same code we did in our previous video to render multiple triangles. It's the one right here. It has less than 100 lines of code. Now remember we defined previously a variable called triangles. In our STL case this triangles variable is actually the vectors, is same as the vectors variable. So to actually load up in our scene all we gotta do is to copy specifically this line of code, replacing, removing this, defining our STL model, copying this, importing our STL library, like so, changing the name. Instead of for each triangle in triangles, it's for each triangle in, a, in our vectors. Same goes for here. And I think that's basically all you need to change in order to run your code. Now if I would run this one, let's see. We actually have our scene, but nothing is being displayed because we have to change the point of view of our camera. We can do this by using the GL translate F. So we are going to translate our point of view with a certain amount, for example, minus 500 along the Z axis. We rerun our code. We will see that our STL file is appearing. Let's make it rotate a little bit by adding all the way up here. After the GL clear, another function called GL rotate F. This is a function. This applies a rotation matrix to our to our model. So the first parameter is the angle the rotation along a specified axis. So it's either X, Y, and Z. Let's say, for example, in, along the X axis, and then rerun our code. Now you can see that it is slowly but surely turning. As you can see here, the number of FPS is at 4, 8. It's rather slow. Now how to improve this, we will actually see it in a, another video, because it's a bit more detailed and complicated than that. Since right now we are displaying our model using the CPU, we are not uh, effectively using our GPU in our computer. So this will be the subject of another video. And also, you can see that we are not using any mouse event. Even if I try clicking, nothing is happening. Because we didn't yet specify any mouse event in our while loop. This will also be a subject of a future video, where I will show you how to fully use the mouse to rotate the object and then zoom with the mouse wheel. But this for now is good enough as a startup for understanding what all everything you need to know about the STL file.
So, thank you for watching. This has been the part 2 of our, well, STL viewer series. I hope you liked the video. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or want to say anything. And peace.